In September 2017, Amazon, the huge online store, said it wanted to build another headquarters in North America. This new place would be just as important as its original one in Seattle, and they were going to spend $5 billion and make 50,000 new jobs there. When Amazon made this announcement, lots of cities and regions in North America went a little crazy. They all wanted Amazon to pick them for this new headquarters. They offered things like tax breaks, help with money, and better roads and buildings, just to get Amazon to come to their place. In the end, more than 200 cities and regions tried to win Amazon over. Some of their ideas were normal, and some were pretty wild. But why did Amazon want another headquarters? How did they decide which places were the best? And what happened to the cities and regions that didn't make the cut? This is the story of Amazon HQ2, a saga of ambition, controversy, and drama that reveals the power and impact of one of the most influential corporations in the world. In 1994, Jeff Bezos, a former Wall Street executive, started Amazon. His idea was simple, an online store for everything. He began in his Bellevue, Washington garage, selling books, but soon expanded into music, movies, electronics, and more. Fast forward to 2017, and Amazon had become a global giant. It boasted over 300 million customers, a workforce of 500,000, and $77 billion in revenue. In Seattle alone, it occupied 8.1 million square feet of office spaces, across 33 buildings, and employed 40,000 white-collar workers. There were also fulfillment centers, data centers, and research labs scattered across the world. However, Amazon hungered for more. It faced challenges like finding the right talent, dealing with high costs in Seattle, and diversifying its presence. Now, to tackle these, Amazon decided to seek a second headquarters to complement its Seattle base. Amazon outlined its requirements. A city with over a million people, close to a major airport, highways, and mass transit offering up to 8 million square feet of office space. They also had some preferences, like direct flights to major cities and proximity to universities. Cities across North America rushed to meet Amazon's criteria. They saw hosting HQ2 as a chance to boost their economies, create jobs, and compete with tech hubs like Silicon Valley. In October 2017, Amazon got 283 proposals from cities across North America. These cities came from almost everywhere in the region, except for a few states and Canadian provinces. Then, on January 18, 2018, Amazon revealed 20 finalists for their new headquarters, HQ2. These finalists included both big and small cities in North America, even one from Canada. Amazon seemed to prefer cities with lots of talent, a strong tech scene, a great quality of life, and a business-friendly atmosphere. They also wanted to be close to political and financial hubs like Washington, D.C. and New York City. This announcement made the competition among these finalists even more intense. Some cities offered more incentives and lobbied harder to win Amazon over. Others tried to predict the winner, while some faced opposition from their own residents and activists who didn't want Amazon's HQ2 in their area. The race for HQ2 was entering its final stage. The stakes were high and the pressure was on. But there was a twist that no one saw coming, a twist that would change everything. Amazon initially picked 20 cities as potential locations for its second headquarters. Then, they spent another 10 months doing more research and visiting these places, talking to local officials and important folks. On November 13, 2018, Amazon surprised everyone by saying they'd split their new headquarters, called HQ2, into two places. One was going to be in Long Island City, New York City, and the other in National Landing, Virginia. Amazon chose those spots because they had the right kind of people, good infrastructure, lots of innovation, and diverse communities. They also wanted to spread things out a bit and have access to talent from different parts of North America. Amazon had more news, too. They were planning to hire 5,000 people in Nashville, Tennessee for a new center that would deal with customer stuff, transportation, and the supply chain. 
This whole split HQ2 thing surprised a lot of people. Some wondered why Amazon didn't just pick one place. Some thought maybe Amazon had this plan all along, or maybe they changed their minds at the last minute. And some people weren't sure if Amazon could really create 50,000 jobs and spend $5 billion like they said they would. The cities that didn't win were disappointed. Some even accused Amazon of playing tricks during the selection process. The details about what Amazon was getting from New York and Virginia also came out. New York offered about $1.5 billion if Amazon created 25,000 jobs with high salaries by 2030. Virginia offered around $573 million for the same thing. Tennessee said they'd give Amazon about $102 million if they made 5,000 jobs with high salaries by 2026. These offers caused a big argument. Some people said it was worth it because it would bring more jobs and money to their cities. Others thought it was a bad idea to give so much money to such a rich company. But while some people were arguing over the incentives, others were plotting against them. And they had a powerful ally, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, a young and charismatic politician, had recently become a U.S. representative for New York's 14th Congressional District, including parts of Queens and the Bronx. She was gaining prominence in the Democratic Party and was a leader of the progressive movement. One of her notable stances was her strong opposition to Amazon's HQ2 project. But why was she against it? Well, Ocasio-Cortez had a few reasons. She felt that Amazon shouldn't receive substantial tax breaks while the city was grappling with housing, subway, and budget problems. She believed that Amazon's presence would make issues like gentrification, displacement, and inequality worse in Long Island City and Queens. She also thought that Amazon would exploit its workers, hurt its competitors, and avoid taxes and regulations. Now, interestingly, she wasn't alone in her fight. Ocasio Cortez teamed up with other local politicians, like State Senator Michael Giannaris and City Councilman Jimmy Van Bramer. They represented parts of Queens and shared her concerns. Together, they organized protests, rallies, and hearings to voice their worries and push for more transparency in the Amazon deal. These allies argued that Amazon was a corporate giant taking advantage of workers and communities while dodging taxes and rules. They called for a more democratic and fair approach to economic development. Their campaign gained momentum when Ocasio-Cortez tweeted, Amazon is a billion-dollar company. The idea that it will receive hundreds of millions of dollars in tax breaks at a time when our subway is crumbling and our communities need more investment, not less, is extremely concerning to residents here. This tweet went viral and sparked a national debate about Amazon's HQ2 project, putting pressure on Amazon and its supporters. Now Amazon was in a tough spot and they had to make a decision soon, and they did. On February 14, 2019, Amazon announced it was canceling its plans to build HQ2 in Long Island City, citing opposition from local politicians and activists as a key reason. They also stated they wouldn't search for another location, but would focus on expanding existing offices in other cities, along with their projects in National Landing and Nashville. This announcement stirred strong reactions in New York. Some, like Governor Andrew Cuomo and Mayor Bill de Blasio, who had championed the deal, blamed the opposition for costing the city jobs and revenue. They accused Amazon of arrogance and irresponsibility for not giving them a chance to address concerns. On the flip side, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and State Senator Michael Giannaris, who led the opposition, celebrated their victory. They believed the city would use the money that would have gone to Amazon's incentives for other essential purposes. The cancellation also had effects on other cities and regions that had competed for HQ2 or hosted Amazon's operations. Some expressed disappointment, regret, relief, satisfaction, or hope, depending on their experiences and perspectives. For instance, in Newark, New Jersey, which had offered $7 billion in incentives to Amazon, Mayor Roz Baraka expressed disappointment, but held hope that Amazon might reconsider Newark as an alternative. He believed Newark had all the elements Amazon sought, like talent, infrastructure, innovation, and diversity. In contrast, in Toronto, Ontario, which hadn't offered any incentives to Amazon, 
Mayor John Tory expressed pride in Toronto's bid. Still, he wasn't surprised by Amazon's decision to split HQ2 into two U.S. locations. He believed Toronto had competed strongly and showcased its strengths without bending over backwards to attract companies like Amazon. Amazon initially believed it could put its HQ2 plan in New York behind and move on. However, that wasn't the case. The fallout from its decision continued to affect the company, both in its chosen locations and elsewhere. In Virginia, Amazon pushed forward with its HQ2 project in National Landing, encountering resistance from some local politicians, activists, residents, and academics, though less than in New York. The company collaborated with the state and county to address various concerns, like affordable housing, traffic congestion, and environmental issues. In January 2020, Amazon began constructing two 22-story towers at Metropolitan Park, marking the start of HQ2. In February 2021, they revealed plans for the second phase at Penn Place, featuring an innovative 350-foot glass structure called the Helix, intended as a symbol of their commitment to innovation and sustainability. By March 2023, Amazon had hired over 8,000 workers for its Virginia HQ2 project, a significant step toward its goal of 25,000 jobs by 2030. They also invested heavily in affordable housing and local nonprofits, injecting life into the area's economy. Amazon's arrival had a substantial impact on Virginia. It created jobs, attracted new businesses, and solidified the county's position as a tech hub. Major companies like Raytheon and Boeing even decided to move their headquarters to Arlington after Amazon's announcement. However, Amazon's presence also led to higher housing costs, increased traffic, and environmental challenges. To counter these effects, Amazon and the government invested in infrastructure improvements such as a pedestrian bridge to the airport, a new metro station, and the bus rapid transit system. Despite these positive impacts, not everyone viewed Amazon's HQ2 project favorably. Critics questioned the incentives offered by the state and county, expressing concerns about Amazon's influence over the local economy and politics. Some also challenged the company's claims of sustainability, citing environmental impacts and cooperation with ICE. Now, in Tennessee, Amazon faced minimal opposition in its plan for the Operations Center of Excellence in Nashville. The company collaborated with the city and state on workforce development, economic growth, and cultural diversity. Amazon leased space in downtown Nashville in December 2019 and began construction on a substantial tower in April 2020. By March 2023, Amazon had hired more than 3,000 workers, making strides toward its goal of 5,000 jobs by 2026. They also invested in local programs and initiatives. Amazon's arrival brought construction jobs, new retailers, and development projects, elevating the state's logistics and operations status. That's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.